What do penguins and poop have in common? Both are the focus of fascinating long-term studies at the University of Washington. And the resulting science is changing policy on a global scale. First, let's talk birds. Forty years ago, these charming creatures became the obsession of biology professor Dee Borsma. I fell in love with penguins, and I've been studying them ever since. Dr. Borsma is passionate about saving penguins. Half the world's species are now endangered. She says their collapsing populations are delivering a warning about the planet's health. They're really good reflectors, good sentinels of what's happening in the marine environment. Borsma has had the rare opportunity to study one type of penguin for nearly three decades. We've been working on Magellanic penguins in Argentina for 28 years. That's a real luxury. Most grants are for two years, maybe three years, occasionally a four or five year grant, but those are really rare. Over the years, Dee's research in South America has documented thousands of oil-covered penguins coming ashore. We estimated that there were about uh, 61,000 penguins that were being oiled every year during their migration. So what do you do about that? And what we finally got the government to realize is, first of all, you got to stop the illegal dumping. We convinced them with eight years of data that this was a chronic problem, and now they've moved the tanker lanes 40 kilometers further offshore, and there's much less illegal dumping of oily ballast water. So there are a lot of problems that people can solve. It's uh, about a meter and a half back, and she's uh, got two eggs. Borsma believes that humans will make change if we understand the cost of our consumption. None of this is for free, and we have to make choices about how our world's going to look and what we're going to do, what we know, how we act, and all of that takes education. And a favorite educational tool is Conservation Magazine. Hi, I'm Dee Borsma. I'm here at Punta Tumbo, Argentina. Dee is co-founder and executive editor of this award-winning quarterly, published at the UW. And Conservation is a publication that routinely exceeds our expectations. Writing, researching, advising students all serve Dee Borsma's mission to preserve biodiversity and ensure a future for the planet's flightless birds. We can change the world one person at a time. In the end, that will save the penguins. If people pay attention to what they do, yeah, it will change the world. Come here, sweetie. Dr. Samuel Wasser is another UW professor changing international policy. He's a research biologist and director of the Center for Conservation Biology. Well, everything that we do in our center starts with feces, believe it or not. While that may not sound so glamorous, poop produces a gold mine of information. We can get the DNA, tell its species, its sex, its individual identity, and we can get all these physiological measures. We can tell if it's stressed, if it's nutritionally impaired, if it's reproductive or not and uh, we can get toxins from the sample, and we can do all that without seeing the animal at all. All right, ready to find it? Oh, all right, let's go. And then you couple that with dogs that can collect huge numbers of samples over large landscapes, and you have a tool like none other. Wasser launched Conservation Canines in 1997. The program now sends scat-sniffing dogs all over the world. We first started out working on grizzly bears and black bears. Actually, in Washington State, we found the first grizzly bear ever found in the Cascades. The smallest animal we study is the Pacific pocket mouse in Southern California, which is the size of a golf ball, and its species is the size of a sesame seed. The dogs have done animals as big as right whales and killer whales. And Tucker is the one who specializes in killer whale waste. Pretty amazing for a dog that doesn't like water. We picked Tucker because Tucker hates the water. He's just, he's hysterical about it. He's got a scent. Tucker will work tirelessly for a certain reward, playing with his ball. It's a trait essential to all these tracking specialists. Almost all of our dogs are rescued from the pound. You have to have a dog that has an insane play drive. I mean, just over the top. Tucker is a valuable helper in the quest to save a local endangered species. Wasser's reputation, however, as a conservation crusader goes far beyond the Northwest. You ready? 
Okay, come on, find it. In Alberta, Canada, when caribou were rapidly declining, Sam's dogs proved it wasn't wolves preying upon them, but human use of roads that interrupted their feeding. The findings helped quiet the call to destroy the wolves. And Wasser's team has genetically mapped elephant populations all across Africa using DNA from scat. His science is being used to fight the illegal ivory trade by matching DNA from poached tusks to this map. The illegal wildlife trade in general right now is, in some accounts, a $20 billion a year industry. And it's really destroying the planet. My laboratory is the only lab in the world that is able to actually take a piece of ivory, genotype it, and tell you exactly where it came from in Africa. Several years ago, when a huge shipment of ivory was seized in Asia, the Wasser lab was able to trace the tusks' DNA to one place, Tanzania. What that means is once we identify a hotspot, we can actually send law enforcement in there and catch them in the act. So we can actually stop the elephants from being killed in the first place. No one else can do that. Plus, his research also convinced Tanzanian officials not to lower the protection status of their elephants. That would have allowed the country to sell their ivory stockpiles, which Wasser opposes, believing it helps keep the ivory trade alive. Sam Wasser's pioneering work is providing unique insights into species on the brink. Both he and Dee Borsma are affecting big change, building public awareness, and altering international policies. No small contributions to preserving life on a diverse and beautiful planet.